It's your industrial size hair dryer and you can't live without it. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today I want to talk about early Relic 7 characters. We're in a pretty good space with the raid where we're getting a lot of materials that we weren't before so that we can get access to higher Relic levels. And so a lot of these characters are maybe already requirements at certain levels and I, I'm like, well, some of them really should be higher than just Relic 5 or Relic 3 or whatever. Some of them are going to be required at Relic 7, but you should get them earlier than later because they're really strong. Or maybe they're, maybe there's characters who, uh, you know, want more than just Relic 7. There's at least one of them on this list that probably should, I mean, it needs to be higher. It's kind of on my wish list. Anyways. Just want to say thank you to all my patrons for all the support. You guys are amazing and really truly appreciate you guys. And guys, just a reminder, if you want to help support this channel, all you've got to do is like, subscribe, comment, do something to help mount the algorithm. That dang thing ain't going to mount itself. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Whoa, we're we're in the game. This is med. Wow. Who who put me in the game? They're silly, man. Tell the who, tell whoever that is that they're silly. That's madness. All right. Commander Luke, guys, I, I've talked about him quite a few times. It, remember, Chupio on his team is going to grab his stats and hand them to other people. That, therefore, you want more relics on him. He's not required at any relic level, really, that I can think of anyways, guys, for anything. I have him at 9. This is my main account. I have a lot of silly relics on it, I realize. Uh, but... Just keep in mind, the more relic levels on him, not only does he personally do better because he's hitting harder and, you know, taking more hits, etc., but he's also able to distribute those stats to his friends. I have him at 9, not because he really necessarily warrants all the way to 9, though it is kind of nice because they use all those stats. 20% of his stats go to his friends as well. I mean, he keeps them and then he hands them out. Uh, but then he also, it, it's also for territory battles for platoons so there is that uh, Maul is a character who also uses a lot of stats you'll see a theme here guys that relic levels really really concentrate themselves on certain characters who are stat hungry and who can use them in a really interesting way Maul can do extra damage based off of his max health and his total amount of damage so he has this anguish ability you can read about it uh, that he uses his max health to feed his his damage as well as his max offense and so uh, this is maybe the weirdest relic level guys it's the it's the little prison chamber that keeps him unable to use his force powers that the mandalorians use at the end of clone wars season seven or whatever and <laughs> It's like, really? That's his relic level? What a strange fellow. Uh, but remember, he's gaining a lot of health with relics. I know he's at 9 on my account here, but um, I mean, he warrants 9, frankly, I, I think. He's very, very strong. And then, obviously, his physical damage. Every time, And he's hitting all the time. Like, he's he's doing, what, 6 instances of damage every single time he attacks? It, it's, it's pretty nuts, guys. Um, uh, talk about force multipliers for relic levels. You, you should have him at more than five. I keep seeing people like going to five and stopping. Seven is definitely a good place to go. Uh, eight is even better because as an attacker, he gains a pretty nice boost there. Darth Vader, keep in mind, guys. So his ship, first off, it's going to go better if he's faster than your opponent. And especially their negotiator. If their negotiator is relic 9, then you need him to be relic 8. If their negotiator is relic 8, then uh, relic 7 is fast enough for Darth Vader as long as you have 6E mods on him and all of his abilities, Zeta, etc. But keep in mind as well on the ground, uh, whatever he, like, he doesn't really run his own team anymore, but he takes so many attacks when he does because of Merciless Massacre that every time he's hitting, it's going to to call on higher stats uh, or you know it's gonna want the more stats be because he does more damage he does more impact and so he, he's a character who 
who takes a lot more turns than the average character and really benefits from higher stats from relic levels. Not to mention, like I said, his fleet is very relevant and he wants to be faster than Negotiator a lot of times to be able to counter that dang thing. Ben Solo is a guy who who really wants more stats. I, I'm kind of embarrassed, guys. I put out a video a while ago saying like, hey, this is how you mod Ben, and it's just like a bunch of health stuff, and that, that's because we initially didn't realize just how much damage he could do. Remember, uh, with, if you use his Omicron here, it ignores, in GAC, it ignores protection. And that, that is just so crazy strong. Like, some people are like, hey, I have 100,000 protection and only 50,000 health. And Ben's like, you're dead. You're dead, son. Remember, he does special damage with his with his attacks. They ignore protection. And his his special damage, every time you uh, every time you give him a relic level, it increases more on special. He, does, he has a harder time critting, but... Uh, but that, that doesn't really matter. It's just his total raw offense. Look at look at how much offense you can get from him, guys. It, it's just insane. I just mod him for lots of offense, and uh, you just want him a lot more stats because you want him to hit like crazy. Remember, also he ignores taunt, so he can target who he wants. He can just take any any old person out. He's like, hey, I see I see you have someone taunting. I will kill them anyways. I will kill your friend and I'll kill the person who's taunting because they probably have a lot of protection and I will hit under that as well. General Skywalker is a very unique tank in this game, folks. He's that guy who gets all the stats based off of how many 501st allies he is and then as he stands up he just totally replenishes himself and you know he doesn't he's at no risk of dying until a certain point other than you know certain circumstances like Mando can disintegrate him and stuff but he's that guy who's really stat hungry as well he wants offense he wants potency he wants armor a lot of protection he, he just he just wants all of it guys uh, like you name the stat and he wants it probably uh, and except for health he doesn't want health and the, the big thing about him is guys he even wants crit chance to be able to crit people as you might imagine but he replenishes himself so much and he's also hitting back so much he, he's a very busy character he's well used like he's get, gets a lot of usage but it's all very powerful and it's it's a lot of fun guys he, he's a lot of fun at relic 9 especially because he gets that bonus protection and extra armor and everything from that and he gets extra damage uh, but even even before that guys higher relics on him is never going to be a bad thing because you get extra armor and you get more protection at the end uh, and you, like I said you keep reusing his stats over and over and over again and the base stats that he has are going to be multiplied to based on how how many characters are on his team so very very worthwhile character all right we got dash here next and first off he's a relic 7 requirement for outrider relic 5 to unlock star killer and he does a ton of damage he wants to be able to he's on it's another stat hungry guy he wants speed he wants crit chance and he wants a lot of extra damage as well lots of offense lots of stuff so uh you know with with his with his unique, everyone at whatever prepared ally scores a critical hit, all prepared allies gain 2% turn meter. Remember that the Seeker missiles do th three instances of damage to all enemies. So in 5v5, that's 15 hits. That's if, if he does all crits, that's 30% turn meter for his entire team. And then when he, I know he can't spam that because it's cooldown four, but he can spam his basic, which is he deals damage three times to target enemies. So that, I mean, that's not too much if you consider, okay, Okay, well that's that's six percent turn meter but then he also every time he crits he calls another random prepared ally to assist and a lot of those guys do more than one da one instance of damage per hit as well and so the the whole team just gains a ton of turn meter but they have to be able to crit folks and if they don't do a lot of if they can't do damage then all those crits and everything is just going to be a lot of fluff they kill Jedi Master Luke pretty nicely but Jedi Master Luke has a ton of crit avoid and if they've modded for it, that's especially difficult. So you need to make sure that he can crit. And it's an important thing. The more, more relic levels you have, the better. Not to mention his ship is extremely important. And you really want that to have a lot of relic levels as well. You can see I have an added 22%. Did I just put that on my triangle? Actually, let me check that. 
No, I just have a bunch of extra crit chance on my secondaries, apparently. Oh, well, and I have one set as well. So, that helps. Uh, Vander Chewy, uh, there's two reasons you want him to have uh, higher relic levels. Uh, he's not required for anything, actually, except for having goggles. The goggles, if you want someone with goggles, you have to have Vander Chewy. But, uh, so he wants to survive, obviously, he keeps his team alive, he revives everyone, he does all that cool stuff. The other thing is, you want more relic levels because it adds more health to him, and his huge hit... Is has such a crazy multiplier that he he ends up doing a he's like ends up being the best DPS on the team surprisingly remember every relic level that he gets he's not getting that much health you would think I mean this is only like a 300 or 3000 boost uh, once you get him to nine which I would really love to get him to nine because he's a tank he he gets an enormous boost but the 3000 doesn't seem like much until you realize that the beast thing uh, so it gives another 80 percent more max health so that's you know 2500 more more health or something like that uh, on top of on top of the 3000 and then his modding is also going to probably just about double his health intake yeah so uh, you know my modding gives me an extra like double the health and so in reality he, he's getting a big old chunk of health and then his big hit is all based on his max health not to mention he get he's granted he's getting prepare or protection up which is based off of his max health as well so all of his stats go through health and the more health you get from your relic level the better not to mention he's more survivable wampa a very similar concept guys remember the protection up is based off of your max health and icebreaker is absolutely necessary for wampa to be able to do what he does and so he gets this protection up based off of his max health which means you want lots of health however you also want a lot of tenacity so they don't initially stun you which means you can't put as much initial attention on health crons or health mods as you would as you would probably like therefore the more relic levels you give him the more he's able to exert his <laughs> authority he's able to just demolish people because he is surviving and ramping his damage he also really want likes these relic levels because he does extra damage and everything and if you want extra potency on him you have to add that through mods which also necessitates you neglecting his other stats and so uh, as a stat hunger character more, the more relic levels the better uh, he just can he can accomplish so much more at relic 8 than even just relic 5 I, i've seen a lot of people try relic 5 and fail and like nah wampa can't do that i'm like well he, he could actually you just don't have enough relic levels on him. Star Killer is a character who wants wants relic levels for several reasons, guys. First off, he wants to be able to kill all the Galactic Legends that he faces, and he can't do that without damage. And uh, there's a couple ways he does that. First off, he hits them, he bludgeons them with his lightsaber, which, which is nice. You know, he's always assisting his Sith counterpart and everything. Uh, the other big thing, guys, is as he uses his mini ult, his Star Destroyer of Healing, it's all based on his max health. And so even a Relic 9 is kind of nice. It's a nice little damage boost to that. Keep in mind as well, though, guys, if you, you're using him in GAC, he's also gaining double health and protection from all of these. And so, yeah, look at look at that extra health and protection. It, it's just pretty nice. Um, uh, he gains double health and protection. His whole team does every time you add a relic level, and uh, so it's it's not being wasted. Very very efficient use of relic levels. My alt was using relic five for a long time until I just started not being able to do enough damage, and I rage geared him up to relic seven, and now I haven't had issues again. Darth Trey is another stat hunger character, and you're hunting Reva quite a bit now with the Inquisition, and she does she gets death marked quite a bit, and she needs to survive all that death mark, or her team just collapses. So you really want the death mark on her to not be totally lethal? Well, her leadership already gives her extra crit avoid. She, they also get a bunch of other stats from all, all the different parts of her kit, but the crit avoid is nice. If you put a crit avoid arrow on her, that, that's really nice. Um, and then her 
relic levels also give her more crit avoidance, guys. The more crit, the more relic levels, uh, the more crit avoid you get, the more relic levels, the nicer. You get more armor, you get more damage. I mean, obviously you get all this stuff, but she really relies on that with, with everyone on Inquisition taking a shot at her and she having death mark. She really needs to survive that. And so, uh, <clears throat> more relic levels, but more better, guys. You can see, I even have crit avoid arrow on her. So even with, right, right now, she's at, what, 88.5% crit avoid. People aren't critting Maitreya too often, which, which is a huge help. All right, Red Trooper, he, he assists every time someone on his team goes. That's almost enough said. Ty Doritos here, and uh, yeah, he does a crazy amount of damage, guys. Over the course of time, it, as long as you're critting, he does a lot of damage. And the Ty Dorito seems to be pretty relevant. Uh, I'm guessing we won't, you won't regret having higher relics on him. When it happens, you, you can take your time and not apply more relics, but my guess is that people are gonna want eight on him. Jedi Training Ray is one that I, I think I said earlier. I, I would love for him or for her to be able to be like Relic 8 because of not not the crit avoid like dot like uh <laughs> Freya has, but because of her dodge chance, everyone who's used Star Killer against her knows that ramping her uh, against Ray with a Jedi Training Ray team, uh, if you ramp her mastery too much, she just it becomes a dodge fest and you can't hit her, and she gains a nice a substantial boost every time you add another relic level. So I know that Relic 7 is required for her for two different Galactic Legends, but I would love to get her to Relic 8 or even 9 because she's a tank and she gets that really massive boost at the end. Bando, he, he, he's also stat hungry. He wants to hit a lot of, like, his Whistling Birds hit 20 times, and they, they don't do that much unless you boost his offense by a ton, and the only way you do that is through Relic Levels, not to mention his ship is crazy strong. Very, very worthwhile to get him relic up, guys. Boosh, she also, I mean, if you don't have Jabba, then I don't know if you really need to, but she does a crazy amount of damage. And it's all based off of if she has a lot of a lot of damage on her. Um, <laughs> she She's an attacker and really benefits from higher relic levels. Royal Guard is another one. It's like, man, I, if I see another Relic 5 Royal Guard, I guess I won't be that, that surprised, but man, Relic 8, Relic 7 is exponentially stronger than at Relic 5. It just is. Like, the... The amount of benefit that you get from just boosting that the just those couple relic levels, it, it's it's very substantial, guys. It's it, it's very large, very large. So the, uh, the the shuttle's also very relevant and powerful as well. And I know that he's only required at relic three for some things, but man, if you have Lord Vader, just get him more relic levels, guys. Trust me, it, it makes a big difference, especially for off-meta counters. All right, finally, guys, we have we have a couple left. Uh, we have Mace Windu here. He does. He's very stat hungry. I mean, that that's like the theme, right? Like everyone who wants a lot of stats really benefits from more relic levels. And maybe nine is a little too eccentric, but I'm sure his ship is just like the best, right, guys? But he wants offense because he is doing a lot of damage, or at least some damage. He, he's going on the offensive. He also wants potency because he's trying to ability block on basic, and he's trying to stun with smite. He, he just might get you uh, but he's also dealing damage on his basic based off of his max health five percent of his max health it does de bonus damage which isn't a crazy amount but i mean it can add up guys it can add up if uh, because he's a tank he is getting a lot of bonuses once you get to nine uh, but even if you don't get to nine he really wants the extra offense he really wants the extra potency he really wants the extra health to be able to stay alive and uh, not not only to do damage based off of his health but i mean because he's galactic republic and goes plays really nicely surprisingly with a lot of different characters uh, he's he really is stat hungry the more stats you give him the better guys hondo is another one that he ramps and ramps and ramps he does a crazy amount of damage and uh, eventually 
and, and, but it's all based off of pre-existing stats and so he's using his old stats to inform like his initial stats to inform how much he can ramp up to and so the higher relic levels you give him I know he's required at five to get Afra but the more relic levels you give him the higher his total threshold of damage it's not just uh, like a linear thing though like maybe it's linear but the thing is it, it just it climbs so significantly every relic level because he's ramping based off of his his uh, base stats. It, it's very impressive. Sorry's another one who she wants health, she wants armor, she wants speed, she wants potency. She she wants too much. She's she's a demanding demanding person. And the more relic levels you give her, the more you can kind of really leverage people into making mistakes against her. Because if you give her a ton of health. And you and you know so maybe some armor or something. I've uh, yeah she with, with if she's not using her current datacron set, which cha kind of changes her dynamics. Uh, she Wampa really struggles to chew through sorty if people aren't prepared to be able to deal with that. If you put a good datacron on her or something, she is very very difficult to remove. Very strong character. BT1. I know that he's only required at relic five for Afro, but man. Yeah, I, I'm using Afra to be able to delete quite a few Galactic Legends at this point, and BT1 is is a big part of it, guys. He like his damage modifiers are just insane. He uses his fire AOE dam damage, and he usually just kills a couple characters on the squad. It, it's very very impressive, and if if you just give him more stats, more damage every single relic level, the it's. It, it's insane. It's very noticeable. Even the jump from like seven to eight. Very, very cool, guys. Uh, completely worth every relic level you give him. B1, he attacks every time his, uh, his friends attack. More relic levels, the better, right? Really cool character. And that's it, folks. What relic sevens do you think should go on this list as early candidates for it you don't absolutely need them on this list obviously but i hope that this has provided a little bit of insight guys thank you all so much for watching and remember that in all things zareth prevails